Good evening. Welcome to our prayer meeting tonight here at Faith Bible Church of San Francisco. And um, we're going to have an opening hymn. And um, it's No One Ever Cared for Me Like Jesus. And uh, from the verse 1 Peter 5, 6 to 7, Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that at the proper time he may exalt you, casting all your cares or anxieties on him because he cares for us. Indeed, there's no one who cares for us more than the Lord Jesus Christ. You could always run to him, and he will take the very best care for us. I would love to tell you what I think of Jesus. Since I found in him a friend so strong and true, I will tell you how he changed my life completely. He did something that no other friend could do. which will be given by our deacon, Seth Hurley. Setting me up here. Thank you for the songs of, uh, of worship. 
Um, that's a, a really beautiful song. I know when I was a young guy, before I started really coming to church regularly, I didn't grow up with hymns. And so, um, you know, it took me a little while to get used to them. They weren't really my style. But the older I get, I really appreciate those old hymns. And I've been hearing them for the last, I don't know, 38 years or so. And they kind of grow on you. And they bring you comfort and peace like, no, like none other. So praise God for that song. Thank you for singing it. And that encouraged me. Um, welcome to the, uh, our Wednesday night prayer meeting. And I just have a few thoughts I want to share tonight. Um, regarding the subject of, there's the subject, forgiveness. <laughs> and uh, let's bow our heads in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord. Such an awesome God. I thank you, Lord, that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us and that you have forgiven us our sins and our iniquities that we deserve to suffer for and pay the price in hell that yet, Lord Jesus Christ, and your infinite love and mercy for us, somehow, Lord, unfathomable in my human mind how he would die on that cross and suffer so much for me and for all of me and that he would take our sins uh, and bear them in his own body and take our place on that wooden cross and endure all the shame but we thank you for that Lord. we've been forgiven and as such father the point of this message tonight is that we we must should and we must forgive our brethren uh, and those that sin against us in jesus name i pray Okay, um, so um, this is kind of a little teaser or a little precursor to the message that, Lord willing, I'll be giving on August 22nd for Sunday morning, and um, it's kind of a, a large subject, so I couldn't cover it all tonight in prayer meeting, but I was kind of trying to decide uh, what the Lord was laying on my heart to, um, to share, and one of the things I've always experienced in my walk with the Lord in my Christian life is that um, when I'm able to share in a Bible study or the last couple of years, um, by God's grace, I've been able to do a little preaching or teaching from the pulpit, which is something I never thought I would be doing. But um, praise God, I've had a chance to do that. And um, But it just, you know, it's, it's just amazing uh, how you can share your life experiences with other people. You know, when you're witnessing, that's one of the things, if you have a hard time witnessing, um, you know, learn a few Bible verses. You know, the Romans Road is what I always like. But share your life experience. You know, what has Christ done for you? Has he saved you? Has he forgiven you? Has he changed you? What has he done for you, and what is he doing for you? And, um, you know, uh, when I have the privilege of standing up here in front of uh, our congregation, a lot of times I try and share what God's doing in my life and what my experiences are, and whether that's what I'm reading at the present moment as I'm reading through the Bible uh, a certain passage or something that God's working on with me or that the Holy Spirit's teaching me um, or something I never noticed or something that I could use to maybe encourage you. But a lot of times I like to tell stories of what I'm going through. And so right now I'm going through a very difficult time uh, of trying to forgive someone who um, hurt me very deeply. And, you know, it's really, really hard to forgive people. Really, really hard. I'm talking when someone does something to you that really offends you that hurts your feelings, that maybe uh, damages your credibility, self-worth, says things about you that aren't true. That's one of the things I hate. I don't like being falsely accused. If I make a mistake, you know, call me out on it, and I'll think about it. And if I realize, yeah, you know, after thinking about it, or maybe I might even have to pray about it, but once I realize I'm wrong, I'll ask for forgiveness, and I will do my best to change. Uh, my dear wife told me uh, that um, I complain a lot. And hopefully you haven't heard me complaining around the church. Uh, I try not to. Um, I was kind of in denial. And she's told me that before. <laughs> it wasn't the first time. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, I don't complain. I mean, you know, the food was lousy. You know, the, the car's out of gas again. No one put gas in the car. And, you know, blah, blah, blah. But I'm not complaining. You know? <laughs> and so I guess I do. And so I kind of had to think about it. I said, you know, work on that. So, you know, once I realize that and come to that conclusion, yeah, I, I do complain more than I should. I also thank God a lot. I also praise God for a lot of wonderful things, and I try and be very positive. And overall, I'm a very positive, upbeat person. You know, some people are very negative. That's just when you're around them, it's no fun to be around them because all they do is complain or all they do is you know, talk badly about other people. I'm not like that, but, but I guess I do complain more than I should. I, I feel like it's, um, it's uh, critiquing <laughs> or it's making a commentary. <laughs> I don't consider it complaining, but I guess others around me do. 
So or those that are close to me. So now I got to wa watch that, and that's fine. But I personally do not like being falsely accused. I don't like someone telling me I'm doing something wrong or I did something wrong when I didn't. And I've had a lot of bad experiences in that in my life, being accused of some bad things that were totally I was totally innocent of. But it it mars your character. And so my point tonight is um, when we are falsely accused or badly treated or sinned against by another bro brother or family member or stranger even, it hurts and it's hard to forgive people. Sometimes people that are the hardest to forgive are your own family members or maybe your own church members, people that are the closest to you. You know how they say, you know, the ones that are closest to you are the ones that hurt you or the ones that are closest to you are the ones that don't respect you like they should. And maybe other people do love and respect you, but sometimes your own family members will, you know, um, treat you very badly. And even the Lord Jesus Christ, you know, you would think that the disciples and his family would have been like, I don't know what the rest of the world thinks, but, you know, that's the Son of God, that's the Messiah, that's my Lord. Like, I'm with him 100%, you know, from the moment they started realizing who he was. But that was the thing. It took them a while to realize who he was. And they, um, even after he died and rose from the dead, they were still trying to figure it out, right? So even the Lord Jesus Christ, you know, what's that verse? He says something like a prophet is not without... Um, recognition or something, and even his own tribe or village or whatever, like, you know, you don't always get respected, and he came to his own, and they rejected him. And so uh, the passage I'm going to look at tonight is a pretty short one, and again, this is just going to be kind of a precursor, Lord willing, uh, to um, my, uh, the message on the 22nd of this month. So if you'll just follow along with me briefly, um, it's in Matthew chapter 18, Matthew chapter 18, and we're just gonna, I'm just going to read 21 through 35, and I'll read this rather quickly. It's a familiar story. Uh, verse 21, 18, Matthew 18, verse 21. <coughs> Pardon me. Then Peter came and said to him, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me, and I forgive him? Up to seven times? Jesus said to him, I do not say to you up to seven times, but up to 70 times seven. For the reason, excuse me, for this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a certain king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. And when he had begun to settle them, there was brought to him one who owed him 10,000 talents. But since he did not have the means to repay, his Lord commanded him to be sold, along with his wife and children and all that he had, and repayment uh, to be made. The slave, therefore, falling down, prostrated himself before him, saying, have patience with me, and I will pay you everything. And the Lord of that slave felt compassion and released him and forgave him his debt, the debt. But that slave went out and found one of his fellow slaves who owed him a 100 denarii, and he seized him and began to choke him, saying, pay me back what you owe me. So his fellow slave fell down and began to entreat him, saying, have patience with me, and I will repay you. He was unwilling, however, but went and threw him in prison until he should pay back what he owed, what he was owed. So when his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were deeply grieved and came and reported to their Lord all that had happened. Then, uh, then, summoning him, his Lord said to him, you wicked slave, I forgave you all the debt because you entreated me. Should you not have also mercy on your fellow slave, even as I had mercy on you? And his Lord moved with anger, handed him over to the torturers until he should repay all that was owed him. So shall my heavenly Father also do to you, if each of you does not forgive your brother from your heart. The Lord add his blessing to the reading. Okay, so I've heard that story before. I always really like that story. I think it's... Uh, it's just amazing. I mean, can you imagine owing such a great debt, having it being given, and then you go out and you, you know, are practically strangling the guy who owes you a tiny uh, amount. So let me tell you a little bit about this amount. Um, and, and also, um, you know, just remember to keep in mind that obviously, as you probably know, uh, when Jesus tells the story, he's referring also to, uh, you know, spiritually speaking, to the kingdom of heaven, okay? And the you know the king represents God, right? That's the kingdom of Christ. And um, it's interesting too. Uh, let's back up a little bit. So before we go into the parable there, there, uh, let's talk a little bit briefly about Peter and his his phrase or answering 
you know, the question of the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, or I should say, his question to the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 21, then Peter came and said to him, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me? I forgive him, up to seven times. Now, so Peter thought he was being pretty self-righteous here and being a really good guy. He thought, I'm really, you know, showing the Lord that I really understand that forgiveness is important. And I'm going to forgive him, you know, seven times. Isn't that amazing, Lord? Like, aren't you so proud of me that I'm such a, so good at forgiving? <laughs> well, in the Jewish tradition, as you may know, the rabbis taught that three times was the amount you forgive someone. And after that, eh, that's it, man. Write them off. They're, you're done. You won't forgive them next time. Three times. And it's funny because I was telling Myra last night, that reminded me that, um, you know, Brother Rocky Freeman, who uh, most of us dearly love and miss. Um, he was a wonderful servant of the Lord, and he, his background was Jewish, he, you know, by um, you know, descent. And so he was treated very badly by his Jewish family once he got saved. He was rejected, and it's a long story, but the short of it is um, I don't believe he really carried on any of the Jewish traditions. I mean, he was probably very against it since, you know, he got saved and all that. Um, you know, he probably didn't like the Jewish customs and things that maybe he was brought up with. Uh, and his family certainly rejected him. But guess what? One time, long story short, I heard a camp. Someone was asking him something about, well, you know, Brother Rocky, if you're praying for a brother, you know, and asking him to, you know, praying for them to come back to church, and you're trying to encourage them to get their life back to God, how, you know, at what point do you give up? Or, or, you know, do you just stick it out till the end and just pray for them over and over? And I'll never forget, Brother Rocky said something. I might have the story a little wrong, but I'm just giving you the general context idea. And Brother Rocky said, you know, after three times, that's it. After I've, you know, met with them and counseled and dealt with them and whatever and prayed for them, if after like three times they just, they won't come around or they won't repent or whatever, I said, I give up on them. I just turn them over to the Lord or turn them over to Satan and say, that's it. I'm done. I'm, I, you know, wash my hands of it. Three times, that's it. And I don't know if Brother Rocky even realized that that was really Jewish tradition. So, you know, three times and you're three strikes, you're out. And three times is a long time. Like if someone, if one of you guys did something really bad to me, you know, three times, and I forgave you all three times. That's a lot, right? But Peter says, ah, how about seven, Lord? Isn't that great, seven times? And the Lord says, no, I say unto you, 70 times seven. Those of you that are good at math, if you can uh, calculate that number, that's what? 490 times. So does that mean on the 491st time that so-and-so sins against you that you stop forgiving him? No, of course not, but what's the point? The point is you forgive them an infinite amount of times, right? There's no limit to it. We tend to think of things, you know, uh, in our finite mind, we have limits to everything. But God, you know, has unlimited forgiveness for us. And we need to see that unlimited grace versus, you know, in our mind and like in the disciples' mind, there was a very limited thing. Like, oh, three times, that's it. They didn't get the idea that, no, grace is unlimited. And um, so getting back to the, the parable, this is very interesting. So the man... Uh, the first man that uh, owed the money, he owed 10,000 talents. Does anybody know what a talent is, how much it is? I knew it was some measure of currency or whatever. I didn't really know much about it, to be honest with you. I read the Bible several times in my life, and I'm like, you know, talent, okay, whatever, you know, denarii, you know, great. Okay, talent is roughly 75 pounds of gold or silver. It's a measuring uh, of, uh, you know, price. And so, or quantity, it's the largest measurement of, of money. You know? um, and so 75 pounds of gold, okay, equals $10 million, roughly, in current currency. So can you imagine, this man owed seven, excuse me, he owed 100, uh, oh, sorry, I can't talk tonight, I'm a little tired, forgive me. He owed 10,000 pounds. That would be the equivalent to 10, I've heard some people say $12 million, roughly. Now, so can you imagine? So that's a huge debt. I hope none of you out there owe 10 or 12 million. Some of us owe a little bit for taxes. Hopefully you don't owe 10 million. That's a lot of money. And then to give you another measurement of, of, uh, of currency, one denarius equals one day's wages, common person in that time. So in order to pay off this debt, this person would need to work 60, excuse me, 6,000 days to earn just one talent. 6,000 days, imagine 365 days in a year. You have to work 6,000 days to earn one talent, okay? And 10,000 talents equals 
60 million days of work. <laughs> it's impossible. And I think that was the point, right? The Lord Jesus Christ wanted to show, just like he said, you forgive 70 times 7, basically meaning an infinite amount. In the same way, this guy owed a ridiculously infinite sum. And guess what? The, mas the master forgave him. Just like we owe an infinite debt because of our sin that we could never pay back, just like this man basically could never pay this back, we, in our own strength, in our own capabilities, in our own uh, attempt at morality, we could never, ever pay back what we owe God as far as our sin debt. That could only be supernaturally forgiven uh, and pardoned by the Lord Jesus Christ, who is worthy to take that upon himself for all of mankind, which is humanly impossible, but with God, all things are possible. And, and the Lord Jesus Christ did that for us. So um, then this same guy that owed this infinite amount grabs his servant that owed him what would be the equivalent to, it, he owed 100 denarii, that's roughly uh, 100 days of wages. And in modern day, that would be about 17,000, 15,000, you know, something like that, which is a good amount. But imagine owing 17,000 versus 10, 12 million. And this guy went and grabbed him and threw him into prison because he couldn't pay. And he did the same thing, right? He begged him for forgiveness and, you know, have pity on me. Yet he didn't. And that's, you know, a picture of us too. So when someone sins against us, since our holy, you know, since our Father, you know, the, our, our Lord Jesus Christ died for us and forgave us, how much more should we forgive others that sin in such really probably pretty small ways? Maybe they're big to us, but, you know, in comparison to what we've done and what God's forgiven us, surely forgive our brethren, family members, friends, co-workers, even the unsaved, right? We have to have a forgiving heart. And what happens when you don't forgive? We'll talk more about this on Sunday, Lord willing. When you don't forgive, you get angry. You become bitter. Everything that person does just bugs you. Every, and everything, you start getting paranoid. Oh, he did that because whatever. Oh, she did that. Like, oh, wait, she's looking at me. Or she's probably talking about me right now to, to auntie so-and-so. You know? and, and they're probably like scheming about what a horrible person I am. You know? And you start getting paranoid because you're so angry. And then Satan starts filling your mind with all kinds of horrible things and all kinds of fears and doubts and anger. And pretty soon, your relationship with that person gets further and further tarnished and destroyed. Guess what? That's exactly what Satan wants to do. Especially if it's within your own family. If you have you know, brothers and sisters fighting or arguing, parents, you know, your relatives, uh, other church members, husbands, wives, in-laws. I've <laughs> Recently, there was an in-law uh, situation of someone I know that you know, refuse to see somebody because there was bad feelings, you know, and I'm not going to mention any names, but there, that happens. Uh, and you know it happens because it probably happens in your own family. I've seen it. My mom and my grandfather, um, when my mom was little, she, he accused her of some stuff she didn't do and got mad at her and, and you know, hit her, slapped her. But she was out, I'll tell you very briefly, she was out on a date with her boyfriend. And it was very clean. They weren't doing anything. They might have been holding hands on the porch or something, but they weren't kissing or doing anything, you know, inappropriate. But he thought they had. And the moment, because maybe she was 10 minutes late or something, the moment he walked, she walked in, he slapped her. And boy, from then on, they stopped talking when she was a teenager. So my mom's relationship with my grandfather, uh, who's now gone on and passed away, was tarnished for the rest of their lives. They went for years without speaking. Just over something like that, over a misunderstanding, over an assumption. So a lot of times these things that, that cause all this friction and tension in our relationships are over stupid things, but there's sometimes a root cause of selfishness or bitterness or anger, hatred, envy, pride. These are all things that the enemy just wants to bring out and use to destroy us. And anytime anybody, I believe, and I'm sure there are scriptures to support this, but anytime someone or something is breaking down and tearing down the family, that's satanic. That is not ever of God. And I've heard someone say one time that, that they were basically, um, there was damage being done to the family, and they were saying how God was blessing their life. How can that be? You can never be walking in the Spirit while destroying and breaking down a family or a relationship. It just isn't so. Those are not fruits of the Spirit. So I just caution you, and if you have something between your brother in the Lord or whatever, family, get it ironed out. Because 
it'll eat you apart, and that's not gonna. You're not gonna be able to to walk in fellowship with God. And lastly, I was gonna share a lot more, but um, boy, once you get going, I mean, time just goes by fast. And so, I wanted to share a lot more, but I'll save that for my message. But real briefly, um, I'll just share the last part of this passage, where and this is a verse that I'm still trying to understand. Maybe I'll have to ask uh, Pastor Alex to help me on this one before Sunday. This is a tough verse. I think I, I, I have an uh, idea of how to understand it. But uh, in chapter 18, towards the end, so it talks about, you know, the, the, the king. In this case, he says, um, after he summoned him and all that, and he said, you know, verse 33, should you not also have had mercy on your fellow, pardon me, your fellow slave, even as I had mercy on you? And his lord moved with anger, handed him over to the torturers until he should repay all that was owed him. And here's the verse that I'm a little concerned or a little um, confused about. So shall my heavenly Father also do to you if each of you does not forgive his brother from your heart. And so I thought about that, and I was like, okay, I, I get that, and that, that makes sense. But what forgiveness are we talking about here? And I kind of came to the conclusion, uh, I think the Holy Spirit helped me, and then I, I read another footnote in, in, the, in the Bible here that basically kind of answered that question, which is basically, this is not talking about forgiveness unto salvation, but it's talking about forgiveness in terms of fellowship, okay, and fellowship within the brethren. And also, I think, you know, when we, so let's, let's say you commit a sin, what do you do? You have already been forgiven, right? Because once saved, always saved, so we can't lose our salvation when we sin, or when we, you know, uh, don't follow this and we don't forgive our brothers. We can't lose our salvation once we're saved. So what does that mean? Well, what do you do when you sin? When you sin, you come to the Lord and say, Father, you know, I confess that I did such and such. It was a sin. Um, I repent of it. Please help me through the power of the Holy Spirit to overcome that. Please help me stop doing it. You've got to like, really give it your best effort and ask God to help you. And then say, Lord, lastly, I'm sorry for grieving your Holy Spirit because I committed such and such sin. You know, and I'm sorry. And then you can have fellowship with God again. Because what does he say? The Bible says, if we confess our sins, he's what? Faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So once you sin, you and I sin against God, that fellowship is broken, right? And so how do you get it back? Okay, you're still saved. You're still a child of God. You're still standing, you know, righteously in front of, you know, in God's eyes because he sees your son, his son. But your relationship, your fellowship has been broken with God. Until what? Until you confess that sin, right? So I think in the same way, that's what this is talking about, that your relationship, just like he's, how he said, you know, like, um, you know, if you, if you have a problem with your wife or an argument and then you pray to God, like your prayers aren't heard, you've got to resolve that conflict first. And it talks about, and I'll share this later but uh, on Sunday, but when you uh, go to give your offering and you realize you have ought against your brother and you have a problem with so-and-so, Leave your offering and go be reconciled unto your brother and then come back and give your offering. So God puts a lot of importance on having right relationships with people and with family members and loved ones and brethren within the church. So if there's something wrong, you get that resolved first. Don't say, well, you know, I'm mad at so-and-so. I'll talk to her next week or I'll talk to him next week. Do it now. Keep short accounts with God, short accounts with each other. And until you do that, I think what this is teaching, and Pastor, maybe you can correct me later if I'm wrong or give me some more insight, but I think that's basically saying that fellowship with each other and with God is broken until you're able to forgive each other. And if you don't forgive your brother, that relationship is destroyed. But also your relationship with God, I think, until you get your heart right, is going to be broken or at least deeply hindered. And the last thing I'll say before I close, and again, thank you for listening. I hope this has encouraged you some. Tune in next on, on Sunday the 22nd uh, for more. Um, but... Um, Boy, I'm not even forgetting what I was going to say to you. Uh, so I'm share one last thing. Sorry. You know, when Alzheimer's starts kicking in, <laughs> the old brain slows down a little bit. Uh, just kidding. Um, oh. I guess I was just going to share that um, what do you do when someone sins against you? They don't ask for you. So I would just encourage you, if you right now, uh, there are only a few of us here tonight, but maybe there's some more people out there watching via live stream. Maybe you have something against somebody, and there's an unforgiveness, unforgiving spirit, you or in that person, and there's a 
conflict, as you think about that more and more, it just eats you up, right? Doesn't it? It makes you angry. It makes you furious, especially if you're the one wrong. And the person hasn't asked for forgiveness. So I just don't want to leave you tonight going, yeah, thanks for sharing all that, but what do I do? I'm really upset right now. This person, I feel anger and hatred towards them. I love them, but I want to kill them. <laughs> it's like, just kidding, Google, right? Not really kill them, but you know what I mean? It's like you're frustrated, and you're just getting eaten up inside, and you're waiting and waiting, and you're looking at your clock and looking at your messages and your emails. That person's not asking for your forgiveness. So what do you do? Last thing I'll say tonight is that's why you have to forgive them in your heart. Okay, you have to forgive them in your heart, and then later, hopefully, you can verbally iron things out and talk to them and tell them you were offended and so on and so forth. As the Bible talks about conflict resolution, follow those those prescribed steps. But to get yourself right with God and right with yourself, and to get peace before you go reconcile to your you know, brother, if you can't do that right now, forgive them in your heart and really, really forgive them. Not in your mind, not verbally or whatever, even when you ask forgiveness or you accept their forgiveness verbally, it still has to be from the heart. Because you could say, hey, Seth, I'm sorry I did this and that. Oh, it's okay, I forgive you. But did I really forgive them? Maybe I'm still really bitter. And it was an insincere forgiveness. The Bible says forgive them from your heart, right? And So if we forgive them from our heart, then we can have peace, and then hopefully we can get them resolved as quickly as Thanks for listening. I hope that encouraged you at least maybe a little bit, if not a lot. So praise God. And we'll go on to um, including our prayer meeting and having our time. Let's pray. Father, I thank you, Lord, for being such a forgiving God. I thank you, Father, that you have forgiven me much. I know I'm imperfect, Lord, and have lots of things to work on, but I thank you that I'm not what I used to be. By the grace of God, I can at least say I've changed so many in so many ways over the years by your grace measure of forgiveness you've uh, measured to me, and I thank you, and I appreciate it, and I pray that all of us will be have a deeper understanding and appreciation for what it means to be forgiven in Christ, and that we would forgive our brothers, forgive all those that harm us, and help us to not be proud, Father. I know that's the biggest thing we probably struggle with is our own pride. Give us the spirit of humility, Lord, and help us to forgive others. Smart pastor, okay. You're gonna take it. Thanks, uh, Brother Seth. Um, passage is in Matthew chapter 18. Uh, the very gist of that uh, chapter is humility, and humility is seen or shown in the exercise of forgiveness. And there is the instruction about the uh, principle about the offending uh, person. There's also the instruction about you know uh, how one should forgive somebody who offended you, and also instruction on how to forgive uh, regardless. So it all points to humility, and that is the essence of Philippians uh, chapter two verses 5 all the way to 11, Lord Jesus Christ became flesh. For what purpose, right? He humbled himself so that you and I can receive the grace of his mercy and love. So thank you, Brother Seth. Looking forward to August 22nd, so just want to plug that in. Uh, Brother Seth will be bounding on that uh, passage. Thank you, Brother Seth. Um, so... At this time, uh, just want to ask you to remember in prayer uh, the following people. People that, uh, brethren that needs um, uh, healing and grace from the Lord. Uh, we have uh, uh, members of Tri-City Church. Uh, one is, uh, uh, we call him Tatay Obet, Father Obet, Tatay Obet. He had surgery, and his, you know, his chest was opened three times. Uh, the first one was the, uh, the uh, heart surgery. Uh, the second and the third because of the infection. So pray for Tate Obed for complete healing of 
his uh, chest. And then we have uh, Tatay Maning, uh, who is the father of Maricor. Maricor goes uh, to the church in Tri-City. He has a recurrence of uh, throat cancer. So pray for Tatay Maning. And then, of course, uh, another um, member of Tri-City, Ati Febi, um, pray that the Lord would allow her to recuperate uh, uh, fully. She's been recovering for a while now, Febi Paraiso. And then uh, Chris Ramos, who had a quadruple bypass last July, uh, was able to visit him uh, today. Uh, pray that he would uh, continue to heal uh, four arteries that were blocked, that he would continue to heal. And then um, a fellow uh, schoolmate uh, and also a fellow campus crusade for Christ at the University of the Philippines, Reynolds College, uh, Brother Leo Castillo uh, has COVID-19 and has been hospitalized for almost 100 days. And uh, there's a good sign that he's recovering, but uh, recovery would uh, take quite a while. So continue to pray for Brother Leo Castillo uh, in the Philippines and also provision, you know, how expensive it is to be hospitalized that long. And then, of course, at the Christina's mom uh, in Vancouver, at the Christina Thompson, I mean, Okadis mom, <coughs> Nana Marina. Um, has been battling with leukemia. So she's over there now. Uh, Sister Christina's over there. Uh, pray that the rest of um, uh, her siblings will be able to join since the mother, Nane Marina, has only given you know a few weeks to live. And we're praying that the Lord would uh, be merciful, heal her. Pray also for Ati Frida. Ati Frida is a member of Tri-City Church. She has breast cancer, and so she is in her last uh, stages of chemo, uh, her chemotherapy, and um, it's been a long battle for her. So uh, she lost her hair, and there are purples, uh, you know, colorization of her uh, nails as well as her skin. Those are the side effects of chemo. Uh, pray for Pastor Mike. Uh, He's supposed to start, would have started uh, his radiation this month, uh, but based on the MRI and CAT scan that was done uh, a week or a week and a half ago, they found a shadow uh, on one of his lymph nodes uh, outside his liver. As you know, he's been battling with liver cancer. And so they're going to do a PET scan uh, two Mondays from now, uh, a week from Monday next week. And let's pray that uh, it will be benign. They will do a PET scan. Because if not, then the cancer has metastasized. So he's praying that uh, the doctor uh, will be given uh, the right um, uh, mind to be able to extract uh, that particular uh, lymph node so that they can 100% uh, find out if it's benign or uh, cancerous. So let's pray for Pastor Mike. And then uh, pray for Ati Luming Bilar, uh, a dear sister in the Lord in the Binyan Laguna area. Uh, she has a, a lung problem and also uh, high in her blood sugar. So pray for her that the Lord would also grant healing upon her. Uh, last but not the least, I would like you to pray for my wife's first cousin. Uh, her name is uh, her name is Maria Aguinaldo. Uh, apparently, uh, her husband uh, died of suicide uh, last week, and so uh, Pastor Mike and Auntie Maricon would be flying to uh, Cathedral City. That will be where the funeral services and uh, the burial uh, forest lawn. And so we will be also uh, joining in extending our condolences to the Aguinaldo family. 
He is Master uh, Sergeant Ruel David Aguinaldo. Uh, they're in their mid-40s or late-40s. And so it is really a devastating, shocking, traumatic event for my wife's cousin, uh, Binky, that's her last name, or Maria. And the three boys or the three sons that they have, they're all in their early teens, I mean early uh, 20s. And it's still, you know, very hurtful uh, uh, to overcome. And so we will be right after Sunday from service, after I teach the membership class, we will drive all the way to Cathedral City and uh, we'll stay there for some time. So pray for the Aguinaldo family as they are grieving with the loss of Real uh, David Aguinaldo. He's a master, master sergeant, uh, retired from the military. So those are my uh, prayer requests. Uh, oh, by the way, uh, continue to pray for Ati Beth Christie. Um, just visited her today. Uh, delivered the uh, hot soup and some essentials that she needs. Um, pray that. Um, Several of the women that I spoke to uh, and myself will be able to um, help her in terms of, uh, so you know, connecting with social services in terms of uh, her medication, uh, in-home care nurse that would visit her. Uh, perhaps, you know, uh, food uh, delivery, just like um, meals on wheels, something like that and also uh, other important uh, aspect uh, of assisting her. As you know, uh, her uh, cognitive um, is affected now, a uh, sign of starting to lose you know, th those memories. I think an early onset of dementia. Um, also, sh um, her face and her foot are swelling, uh, so uh, tomorrow, I plan to also uh, visit and see if I could talk to the other two ladies or perhaps one of them to be able to schedule uh, a meeting with her uh, social service uh, person to help with her health and other needs that she would uh, need as, as she age. Uh, but she's uh, doing well with our new place at the trailer. So praise and thank the Lord. All right, so if you could remember those things that I mentioned to you and include them in your daily devotion, I would appreciate it. Okay, so do you have um, any praise item or personal uh, request uh, in mind before we, you know, conclude in terms of assigning the prayer? prayer request. Pray also for my membership class uh, this Sunday and next Sunday, and we will have our baptismal service on the last Sunday of August, I, I believe August 29th, right after our luncheon, we'll have four people who are going to be baptized. Then um, another one would be um, become an official member of the church by way of transfer. So. That will be a total of five. And that is, uh, I spoke to at the Sister Melissa Migalios, uh, that is uh, Cobb's mom. All right? So, all right, uh, those who are in this room, do you have any praise item or prayer request? Or 